Namaste. Welcome along to Easy Beginner Floor Stretch with Gayatri. That's me. Um, we've got some good news. We're allowed to have uh, groups of 10 in the park doing exercise now. So um, within the next week, we're going to be starting one class a day down at Wally Park. Um, we'll be letting you know via Facebook and email. So please keep your ears and eyes open. It'll be happening soon. I'm just organizing a timetable and finding out when the teachers can actually come and do the classes. So once we get it all finalized, which will be in the next day or two, we'll let you know. And um, hopefully we'll meet you down at the park. It's going to be beautiful. There's some, been some beautiful weather lately, so hopefully it continues. So let's begin rolling the shoulders. Three big circles. And then three the other way. few neck rolls. And a few the other way. Hands on the belly below the navel. Use the hands to guide the belly deep within the lungs, feeling the belly expanding as you inhale. And then feel it contracting as you exhale. Nice rhythmical deep breaths. Take your time. Just relax. You don't want to try and force the breath into your body. You just let it enter when it's ready so it'll take time to fill the lungs. And we'll move the hands onto the ribs. You can cross them over if you like or just slide them up, breathing into the middle lungs, using your hands as a guide. Feel the expansion of your ribs as you inhale and the contraction as you exhale. Cross the hands, place them up onto the chest, breathing into the upper lungs. breath into the upper lungs and take one hand back down under the navel joining all three breaths and so filling the lungs from the bottom to the top emptying them from the top to the bottom big breath. Relaxing your breaths, placing your hands in your lap or down beside you. Squeezing the shoulders up towards the ears, taking a big inhale. Exhale, releasing any tension on that forcible exhale. Three of these all together. Last one. Take the ear down to the shoulder. Right hand comes to the side of the head. So your right ear to right shoulder, I should say. Left shoulder slides down, finding your tight spot, breathing into the side of your neck, not pulling on your neck, just letting the weight of your arm stretch your neck.
And then just bring the head slightly forward so chin comes closer to your chest. Five more breaths here. A little further forward. Releasing, bringing the chin all the way over to the other side. Left hand to the side of the head, starting on the side of the neck. Right shoulder slides down. Bring it chin a little further forward. And a little further forward again. Releasing. Taking the chin over to the right shoulder. We'll bring the left hand onto the jaw and gently press. Taking the chin to center and then over to the left shoulder. Coming back to center. Interlace your fingers behind your head. Open and lift the chest. Take the arms back and then bring the elbows forward. You want to keep your shoulders back and your spine straight here. There's a number of ways you can do this, but we're working on specifically the back of the neck here. So forward and inhale as you open the front of your body. Coming forward this time and we'll hold for five breaths. And gently release. Just a few circles with the head or figure, figure eights if you prefer. Whatever works for your neck, just be gentle. Get a bit of movement back into the neck. And we'll take our arms out to shoulder height, crossing the left arm over the right. Bring the elbows nice and high, arms and hands away from your uh, forehead. <clears throat> you can bring the back of the hands together or maybe you've got the thumb if you can't bring your palms together. Lift your elbows, slide your shoulder blades down your back. And we'll circle the elbows. And change direction. Take your arms back out. And right arm over left. Or the other arm anyway. Is that right? <laughs> Sometimes I get a bit mixed up with my rights and lefts. Little circles or big circles. And then change direction. And release, just a few circles. And then a few the other direction. Taking the right arm up, place it down in between the shoulder blades, arm out to the side, left arm. And then rotate it so it faces back and up. This helps to internally rotate your arm so that you can get it higher up your back. Clasping your fingers. If you can't reach, just pop a strap over you, or a belt or a towel over your shoulder. Take hold of the towel and work your hands towards each other. Try to keep the right shoulder, the uh, right elbow above the right shoulder, sliding the left, sh the right shoulder down. You don't want it to come up towards the ear. Gently. 
gently release. And we'll take the left arm up, place it down in between the shoulder blades, right arm up, rolling it back, lifting it up behind your back, clasping your fingers. circles with those shoulders. And take your strap or your belt. Taking the strap wide enough so you can get the arms behind you without bending your elbows. This is really good for your pecs, triceps, biceps, those muscles. The top of your arms there, the front of your arms. And now we just work in that tight spot behind. Lifting up and releasing, feeling that nice flood of energy rush into your shoulders. Don't miss that. Feels pretty good. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, hands behind your back. We're going to walk them back. Try to keep them shoulder distance apart or you can bring your fingers together if you can and then we're going to lift the chest as if someone's got a, a string on our chest pulling us up to the ceiling. And that feels good. <laughs> I like this one. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale to the floor, walking towards the front of your mat or the side of your mat if you're on the side. Just trying to keep your hips relaxed, your spine straight, shoulders back. sweep up. Exhale, left hand to the floor, slide it out away from your hip. Keep it lined up with your hip. Roll the left shoulder, the right shoulder back, reach out into the fingertips. You can look straight ahead or up at your arm. Keep both buttocks grounded. And then sweep up. Exhale to the other side now. And lift to the floor, we'll take the left out, leg out to a 45 degree angle. Inhale, lift and exhale down. So we've got our right leg, foot, sole of the foot is to the inner thigh there. And you want to twist a little so that you've got one shoulder each side of your leg. You can flex your foot to increase the stretch. Drape the left arm over the leg. Take the right hand onto your waist, rolling the shoulder back. If you want to go a bit deeper, take the arm around your back or you can take it over towards your ear. Inhale. 
Inhale, lift. Exhale, left hand to right knee, gazing over the shoulder. Coming back to the front, we'll swap legs. Inhale, lift. Exhale, coming down over the leg. So we're trying to get the belly down onto the thigh and then the rest of the body will follow. You need to get that belly down first so you're not rounding your back too much. You want to keep it fairly straight. Draping the arm over the leg, left hand to hip, rolling the shoulder back or ro wrapping it around your back if you want to go a little bit deeper or you can bring it over for a deeper stretch. Reaching into the fingertips. Sweep arms up, right hand to left knee. Nice twist, twisting from the rib cage upwards. Coming back to the front, we'll take our legs out in front of you. Inhale, lift, extend the spine up and then exhale down over the legs, keeping that chest nice and broad, shot spine nice and straight. You can use a strap of belt if you like, or towel, popping it around your, the balls of your feet. Coming up, we'll take our legs out to a wide angle. As wide as you can get them, they might be a little V, they might be right out to the sides. Inhale, lift. Extending the spine, create some space. Hands down beside your hips, lift the spine and then press forward. Once you start to come too far forward, you'll probably find you'll lose the stretch. So you may need to bring your hands to the front. You can continue to walk forward. You may be draped all the way down over the floor. And maybe you're up here still. This often gives you a good stretch if you're a little bit tight in the hamstrings, just pushing your torso forward. Slowly coming up, we'll bring the feet together for Bhattakanasana. Taking the ankles or the tops of the feet, lifting the spine, relaxing the groin, let the knees melt down towards the floor.
and then we'll take the outside of the knees and lift. We're going to come down onto our side now. This is one of my favourite stretches. We're going to bring our legs into deer position. So we've got our knees bent, the left knee is sitting in the right sole. And we're going to take a towel or a couple of cushions or bolster if you've got one. We're going to bring it right next to the hip there, right into your waist. And we're going to drape over the bolster, left arm above the head and then right arm comes over to meet it. Now you can move your torso back and your legs back. This will increase the stretch. It's a beautiful stretch, especially through the top of the hip into the waist. If it's not comfortable with your arm up over your head, you can bring it onto the bolster. And we're just relaxing here. Just let your body melt down towards the floor. Bring the left arm back up and over. Coming onto your forearm and we'll move to the other side. So just bring it underneath your waist. Knees, uh, legs are in deer pose. Both knees bent, right knee is sitting in the left sole. Draping down. Left arm lifts over the head, you're just resting your head on your upper arm. Right arm reaches over and palms meet. And then you can start to move your torso and legs back if you need a deeper stretch. Just relax. Let your body stretch. We don't want to clench onto that tension, it's no good for us. Just let it go. over, lifting onto our forearm, coming up, and just stretch your legs out. We're going to place our bolster under our lower back. Now if it's a bit high for you, if you've got a thick bolster, maybe just use a towel. You can bring it onto the lower side if that's what you need. Just relax your back and your hips. You may have two towels rolled up together or one. out of these gently they're quite strong stretches even though you don't feel like you're doing much we're going to move the bolster up underneath our shoulder blades now so your arms are above your shoulders sorry above the bolster and from here you can pop your head on a book or a 
bolster and a cushion just so it's not hanging midair if it's not comfortable for your neck. Just relax your hips, your spine, your face, your shoulders. Take our two blocks or books if you've got them. Hopefully you've got blocks by now. I think Kmart and everyone's sold out of them, haven't they? If everyone's working out at home. So we're going to open up our shoulder blade area now. So we're going to have our blocks like a T. You could also have them flat if you prefer it flat. I like mine up higher. So I'm going to place one block in between the shoulder blades and the other one under my head. Take your arms out or they can be down beside you or they can be up over your head. Try to relax, let your body sink down. It's a stretch and a half, isn't it? Don't realize till you're coming out of it how much you have stretched. Good feeling. Okay, so we're going to make our way over onto our stomach now. I'm going to bring our elbows underneath our shoulders and pull the floor towards us for Sphinx Pose. Nice stretch for the spine. So you make sure that your elbows are directly under your shoulders, so you're getting a nice stretch. If you need a deeper stretch, you can use blocks, pop them under your forearms. This takes you up a little higher, and it's still a nice gentle stretch. down. I'm going to slide our left shoulder, our left arm out so we can get our right arm behind, crossing the arms over, walking the elbows away from each other, resting. Your chin on your upper arm. Just making sure to keep your shoulders nice and level.
and then sliding the arms back. Sphinx again, just take a couple of breaths here, relaxing your lower back. Right arm forward, left arm behind. Right arm crosses over the front. Just relaxing on your upper arm, keeping your shoulders level. Uncrossing. Sliding the elbows back. And then we're going to take the right arm out in line with the shoulder. And we're going to just roll up onto the hip. If you've got back issues, if you've got shoulder issues, you may need to bring your knee to the floor. Otherwise you've got one on top of the other or you can take the left leg back, right arm back. You can even straighten the leg if you need to. Just whatever you, works for you. Just wanting to stretch through the front of that right shoulder. back on to our stomach and we'll take our left arm out right arm comes right hand beside the chest rocking up onto your knee or one leg on top of the other or right leg back right arm back if you need it to be if it's not comfortable with your head neck you can just pop a cushion under it or a block to our stomach. We're going to take our feet into our hands now and we're going to press the pelvis down into the floor. Now if you can only take one leg that's fine. Just take one foot at a time even with one hand. We'll give you time to do the other one. And you can, if you can work your hands down to your ankles you'll probably get a deeper stretch and we're just going to press the hips into the floor as we pull gently the heels into the buttocks. The more you press those hips down, the deeper that stretch will be. And if you've got one leg, take the other one now. We're going to gently release, letting your feet come to the floor. We're going to press the lower pelvis into the floor, draw the navel into the spine, coming into the salabas and are gazing down at your mat.
and lowering back down. Take a few breaths here. We're going to do three of these locust poses. Next inhale, lift. And lower. A couple more breaths, relaxed here. Coming up. And lowering down, place one cheek on the mat, wriggle the hips, releasing your lower back muscles. beside the chest we're lifting onto our knees and we're lowering into child's pose knees can be slightly apart or they can be a lot apart I'm just going to adjust <laughs> microphones all over the place there you go so just breathing deeply relaxing the back and the hips here if your hips are high off the floor, you might be more comfortable with your head on a block or fists. And then just letting those hips sink down towards the heels. Maybe they're all the way down on the heels. Maybe they're all the way up in the air. Your body's only going to do what it's ready for. We're going to now, we're going to um, step our leg, right leg forward. You can use blocks if you like here. You can sweep your arms up if you like. You may have your hands on the floor. You want to get these hips forward, so bring them forward, let them sink down. We're going to slide this right leg across to the other side of the mat, coming onto the top of the foot. So the knee is just out from your shoulder. It's not at the center line, it's out to the right. And we're gonna slide the left leg back. Check that it's in a straight line out from your hip. And from here, come down onto forearms or, or head or fists or forearms, wherever is comfortable for you. Now you can um, come down onto your hip if that is more comfortable for you and bring your knee into your, the sole of your foot and that will give you the same sort of stretch without too much um, problem with your knee if you've got knee issues. back underneath your hips lifting onto your knees and we'll step the left leg to the front using your blocks or sweeping up if you like or hands to floor if you've got that flexibility in your hips And now we'll 
we'll slide this foot over to the opposite side of the mat. Coming into pigeon pose. So right leg slides back, coming down onto forearms or onto your hip if you need that um, different option for your knee. back up onto your hands, bringing the knee underneath the, the uh, hip and we're going to bring the hands down underneath the shoulders for cat cow, lift the sit bones and round the back and tuck the tailbone under as you gaze over, over your thighs and then inhale, lift the sit bones gazing up, exhale round the back. Coming to neutral and we'll walk the hands all the way to the front of the mat, bringing your forehead to the floor, hips are sitting above your knees, drawing the chest down. This is sometimes called heart melt, we're melting our heart down towards the floor. It's a really nice chest opener and shoulder stretch. the hands over to the left now and bring the right hand on the left if you want a deeper stretch drawing the right shoulder down towards the floor so keep walking around until you get a really nice stretch this is a lovely deep stretch all the way through the side of your chest up into your underarm And we'll walk over to the other side. Left hand on right hand. back to the center and we're going to move into um, just a very gentle uh, balancing pose now so right leg slides out behind left arm out in front gazing down at your mat or over your fingers if your balance is good Hand to floor, knee to floor, left leg swings out, right arm out in front. Hand to floor, knee to floor, three more cat cows. swing around onto our sit bones so you can cross your ankles over and rock back or you can just swivel around take our legs out in front and we're going to do six rolling um, 
just rolling down and rolling up. They're like spinal rolls, but they're mainly for the abs. But you're still getting that flexibility in your spine. And try not to jerk. You can come forward a little bit and that will give you a hamstring stretch and then rolling back. And we've got five more. Last one. And we'll place our hands down beside us. Take your um, arms out to shoulder height. Bring your feet up onto the mat. I'm gonna cross our left leg over the right leg. Roll the knees to the right, gazing up at the ceiling or over your arm, just relaxing. Try to keep your left shoulder blade on the mat. Lift the legs, uncross them. Right leg crosses over the left, lower them to the left. legs, uncross them, hug them into your chest, bring your forehead to your knees and take the top of the knees and roll them in circles or you can finish with happy baby if you like. And change direction. Slide your legs out, popping your knees on a bolster if you're more comfortable that way. Palms up, sliding your arms away from your body. Feet are slightly parted, just letting them fall to wherever they fall. Just move your neck from side to side, just feel the release and the tensing of your muscles. Let your body melt down into the floor.
relaxing your toes, soles of your feet, tops of your feet, ankles. Relax your lower legs, your upper legs, hips and pelvis. Buttocks are sinking into the floor. Relax your lower back, your middle back, your upper back and your spine. Relax your belly, your ribs. Relax your chest. Let your shoulders sink down towards the floor. Relax your upper arms, your lower arms, your wrists and your hands. Relax the back of your neck, the front of your neck and your throat. Facial muscles are soft and relaxed, just as if you're sleeping. Scalp is free of tension in the back of your head, gently resting against the floor. Just relax your whole body. So let it melt down a little more with every breath. Very gently begin to move your fingers and your toes. You can bring your arms up over your head and give the body a final stretch. Bring your knees into your chest, give them a little squeeze. And then you can roll to one side, just very slowly making your way up to sitting. sing a little bit of Om Hari Om. So I'll sing it through first and then you repeat, just singing it through call and response style. Just rest in this mantra. It's like a nice rest for the mind.
finishing off with a quote from the Bhagavad Gita. Spiritual wisdom or with yoga wisdom here. One who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering the result, results unto the Supreme, is not affected by a sinful action, as the lotus leaf is untouched by water. The yogis, abandoning attachment, act with body, mind, intelligence, and even with the senses, only for the purpose of purification. The steadily devoted soul attains unadulterated peace because he offers the result of all activities to the Supreme, whereas a person who is not in union with the Divine, who is greedy for the fruits of his labor, becomes entangled in this material realm. Thank you for joining me and hopefully we'll be down at the park soon. So keep your eyes open and um, we'll be sending out an email probably today or tomorrow letting you know what's happening. Namaste.